All right, I'll give you all a minute or so to do that journal. And I'm not going to do it all. I can tell some of y'all aren't even trying or aren't even attempting. Let me come in here and do my attendance real quick. Uh, no faith mm -hmm. and no jasmine. And after we do our journal, then we'll take our quiz that we're taking today. And then we're going to come back and look at a few more examples of some electron configuration. And continue on with that tomorrow. Remember on Thursday, you'll actually have a quiz overriding the electron configuration. And um, we will have a, you'll, I have a sub on, I have a sub on Friday, so y'all will not be Zooming in. I will give y'all an uh, assignment. It's electron configuration review, and you'll have to turn that in in order to get credit uh, as far as attendance goes. So I'm not going to do all of these. I'm just going to do the uh, shortened or the noble gas, and then y'all can check from that off of your other ones. But nickel is element number 28. So it's on the 3D line. And it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is eight into the 3D line. So 3D eight is going to be my very last thing that I would write. So, like I said, I'm just going to do the noble gas one, which would be AR4S23D8. That's only one of the three that you need on there. But I will let y'all give the other two a try and figure it out. Does anybody have any questions on that before we move to the quiz? All righty, if you will, and y'all do this on quizzes so you have to get your Chromebook out. If you'll go into your classwork and go down to quizzes, 
you should see electron configuration notes. And that is the quiz that we are taking today. And it's already been launched in your classroom, so you can go ahead and get started. And you have eight minutes on it. Alrighty, get your last answers in. Time's running out on this one. Alrighty, that was my timer. So go ahead and put in your last answers if you need to. Y'all I may already all be through. All right, it's gonna go ahead and end. All righty. We're gonna go back to our notes. And we're going to, uh, first of all, I think we'll take a minute and we'll look at one that goes into the F because we did not do that yesterday. And then we'll look at some exceptions and then some ions. All right, so today we're going to look at element number 67. which has a symbol of HO number 67. And it's one, two, three, four. It's right here on your periodic table. So it's in the F. So it's in the 4F line. And then if I count in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, it's the 10th one in. So that means the very last thing that I should feel would be 4F10. And on your periodic table, you have some lines drawn. And then and the numbers also match up. So that means once I start going down and I need to get in the four F's, I have to do this one, five D before I go into the four F. So that's what makes it a little bit different. So uh, element 167 is all the way down here. So I'm just gonna start at the beginning and write longhand electron configuration, one S2, two S2, two P6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6. So that gets me to the end of period four. So I'm right here. I still got a ways to go because the element I'm looking for it is in period six. So 5s2. 4D10, 5P6, 6S2. I'm going to do this one that's in 5D, so that would be 5D1. Then I can come down and do my four Fs. And we said it was four Fs and it was 10 places in. So it would be four F 10. So that would be the longhand electron configuration for element number 67. Holinium. Huh? Holinium. Holinium. So now if I wanted to do noble gas, 
remember this 4F is it comes from here. So that means the noble gas that before is before it would be right here, which is xenon. And then I need to write what's in the period six until I get to that. So that would be this part right here. My 6S2, 5D1, 4F10. So the Fs are a little bit different and then you got to catch that one little D first. All right, if you uh, look at the very last page of your notes, so look at all that's on the back. It talks about some exceptions. So we're gonna look at those and then we'll look at some ions. All right, so we have some exceptions for electron configuration. It falls within the transition metals. Some of the transition metals, not all, the, all of the transition metals. And exceptions in electron configuration only occur between S and D sublevels. And the reason there are these exceptions or the ones that we're going to look at is because it increases the stability of the element. So sublevels are most stable whenever they are either half full or completely full. And for some elements, electrons will shift to different energy levels to accommodate this stability. So if I look at chromium, and chromium is element number 24, I would expect that it has this electron notation. That's what I would think it would be. So that means at the very end, I would have 4s2. And then I would have 3d. That's what we think it would do if we followed all the rules that we've been learned so far. But in reality, this D is very unstable with that one sub, sub level with no, that one orbital with no electrons in it. So one of the S's changes energy levels and it comes and it fills in that orbital. And this ends up being what we actually have as our electron configuration for chromium. So that means if you had to write the electron configuration and you wrote the first one, that would be wrong because this actual is the true one. Break some of the rules, which we kind of talked about transition, ele uh, transition elements kind of do that sometimes. Yes, sir. All right, so let's look at another exception. If we copper, copper is element number 29. So if we wrote out its electron configuration, this is what we think it would be. Three D nine But once again, this is very unstable. That, 
that orbital with just one electron is very unstable. So once again, S, one of those electrons changes and it comes down and it fills that in. And this is what we actually have. That's the actual electron configuration for copper with a 4S1, a 3D10. That way the D is completely full and the S is at least halfway full. Then some other ones that have some exceptions are molybdenum, silver, gold, and also W, which is tungsten. So tungsten, it's true electron configuration. I'm just going to do the noble gas. Is 6S1, 4F14, and 5D5. You can see this 6S, one of those electrons has come over to that 5D to make that 5D at least halfway full. And then molybdenum, CR, 5S1, 4D5, same thing. 1S electron has gone into the D sublevel. So now everything's halfway full. Silver, C, uh, KR, Krypton, 5S1, 4D10. used an S electron to go in there and fill up all of those orbitals in that D sublevel. And then gold, xenon, 6S1, 4F14, 5D10. So once again, you can say, see this is only 6S1. So one of the electrons has gone to fill out that D. So those are the different exceptions that you'll be responsible for knowing. All right, so now we're gonna look at some ions and how you would draw the electron configuration for those. So I'm gonna go back to a periodic table. All right. So ions, we've talked about ions already. Ions lose or gain electrons in the outer most S and P sublevels. So in our notes earlier, we talked about the fact that valence electrons are found in your highest energy level S and P. So that's going to be where an element's either going to gain or lose its electrons when it forms an ion. So if I look at calcium, we'll just start with calcium. And I'm just going to start off and draw neutral calcium, the calcium atom. So it's 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. 4s2. So it's outermost. Outermost means the highest energy level. It's outermost s and p. It doesn't have a 4p. It only has a 4s. 
So that right there represents the valence electrons and calcium. So two valence electrons, which is what we know it has because it's in group two. And it's represented by that 4s2. Now calcium is in group two, it's a metal, so it loses electrons. And in fact, it will lose these two valence electrons and it will become a two plus ion. So when it does that, it loses those two electrons. So now instead of having 20 electrons, it's gonna have 18 electrons. So it's gonna have the electron configuration of the element that has 18 electrons. 2P6, 3S2, 3P6. And what element has 18 electrons? Argon, exactly. So that means calcium ion is now isoelectric with argon. It's been a while, but we talked about the word isoelectric. That means it has the same number of electrons. So calcium lost two electrons. So now it's isoelectric with argon, which makes sense because we know the noble gases are very stable. And that's why an element either loses or gains electrons to become more stable. So now it's gonna have a configuration like a noble gas. All right, let's look at a non-metal does the opposite. Instead of gaining electrons, it loses electrons. No, I said that wrong. Instead of losing electrons, it gains electrons. All right, we good with this? All right, so let's look at, we'll look at phosphorus, which is right here. So I'm gonna start off and I'm gonna draw the configuration as phosphorus. And phosphorus has 18. No, it doesn't have 18. How many does it have? 15 electrons, 15 electrons phosphorus. So 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. 3s2, 3p, 1, 2, 3, 3p3. Three three. That would be my configuration for phosphorus. And these would rep represent my valence electrons because they're my outermost S and P. So right now, phosphorus has five valence electrons. What kind of ion does it form? Uh, it'll eventually become isoelectric, but what kind of ion does it form? How many electrons does it gain? Uh -huh. It gains three. Right now it has three, four, five, eight. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble, really having trouble counting today. It has five, it wants eight. So that means when it becomes an ion, it gains three electrons. It becomes a negative three. So now it's going to have the electron configuration of the element that has 18 electrons. So it would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. So it went from here to right here. So once again, it is isoelectric with phosphorus at gate three. So it's isoelectric with argon, right? And once again, that makes sense. That specific configuration of a noble gas is the most stable. So it makes sense that phosphorus would form an ion to get that configuration because it's very stable. It went from having 15 electrons to when it's an ion, it has 18 electrons. And argon is the element that has 18. Now, remember the transition metals can be a little bit different. I don't really ask y'all to predict 
because they don't always follow the rules, but they're all metals. So if I gave you something like, not like that, but if I gave you iron with a Roman numeral or two or Fe plus two, then that should tell you that it's forming the plus two ion. So it's going to lose two electrons. So R normally has 26 electrons. Once it loses two, then the ion has 24 electrons. So that's going to be its new notation with just 24 electrons. So if I look at iron, I'll start off with iron. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, and then 3d6. Because it's right here. So that would be iron, but we said whenever it becomes an ion, it loses two electrons. It does not lose that from the D. It loses those from the S because this 4S2 is its valence electrons. So that's what gets lost, which means that Fe2 plus, now it's electron configuration, I'm gonna do it in noble gas would be AR3D6 because it's lost these two that are S's. Those are the valence ones. Because the 3D6 are not valence electrons. They're not going to be the ones that are actually the farthest out. Remember the 3D, the reason that the 4S is a little lower in energy. That's why it gets filled first, but it's still energy level four. So it still is a little farther out than the three. And so in the valence and electrons are lost from the farthest out principal energy unit or the one that has the highest number. That's why the transition metals are kind of cause a little trouble. All right, so that's kind of an example of some ions because there's some of those on your practice also. So um, I think we've done some examples of everything. So you got a little while to do some practice. It is, what time is it? Uh, three, um, one <laughs> okay, let's go about five minutes. Work on your practice from yesterday a little bit. If you have any questions, you can unmute and ask them. I don't think I have anything in the chat. And then tomorrow we're going to do some task cards, hopefully work in pairs. If I can get y'all separated into pairs again, if I can remember how to do that. We will have quiz over this writing of them on Thursday. Let's go. I'm going to set my timer for five minutes so I can forget.